All right, here we are in another round of 16 matchup for the Man Up 2.0 tournament. I'm Helium, uh, bringing this to you again, but this time, luckily, joined by Orbit, uh, co-casting with me tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, actually. Uh, glad to make it for this game. This game actually looks like some uh, pretty tough opponents now. Carry TP, as well as Lanaya's Little Secrets. Um, I definitely have heard of some of the players from both of these teams, so it should be pretty good. And already into the banning phase. Yeah, seriously, this one's going fast. So we see another Treant <laughs> Lifestealer first ban out here from the nice Little Secret. Saw it again last game. I don't know if you caught any of it, but uh, yeah, it was the first good game, uh, or first contested game, I should say, of the Man Up tournament so far. A lot of stomps early on. Uh, looks like we'll have another good one coming up here uh, with Carry TP versus the nice Little Secrets, and then OD Batrider taken out. Wisp picked up, so what do you make of all that? Uh, some pretty interesting... Actually, I just got here, so... Uh... I'm glad to see some good teams playing against each other for now. Um, pretty interesting that the uh, Wisp was left out and being picked up almost immediately. But, um, you know, Aggro tries to work pretty well against it and carry TP picking up the Visage as soon as they see it. So looking to put on some aggression in the lightning phase early on. So a nice response from uh, carry TP here. Yeah, we saw Wisp picked up earlier today, or I shouldn't say we, I guess I saw, and many of the viewers that <laughs> stuck around saw Wisp picked up with a tiny immediately, and it got shut down so hard, uh, so we'll see uh, if Lanai's Little Secrets can do a little bit better with that. Uh, they're on the Radiant side, so maybe we see CK Wisp in the mid lane. Uh, if they don't pick the CK here, I wouldn't be surprised if Carry TP bans it out. And we've been seeing a lot of Weaver play so far this tournament. Radiant team ban. Uh, alchemist the alchemist pick. pick here is pretty greedy, actually. Um, you know, uh, with a visage pick, it seems like they are going to be aggro trying. I wouldn't be surprised as if uh, if they continue the greed a little bit more, maybe going for a Chen pickup later on. I don't know if uh, Alia and his team pick Chen that often, but it seems almost uh, alliance esque in that sense with the Wisp. Yes, it does. Do. That Ake Chen. Now... Yeah. <laughs> or that Helium Dying. Chen if you're in that NA Dota scene. It's pretty respectable in its own right. It's pretty sweet. But we could see Alchemist go mid. I don't know like how important it really is for them to put Wisp in that mid position to get the levels faster. It's on the Radiant side. You can stack and pull the small camp to get the levels faster. But if you do the defensive tri-lane correctly with the Wisp, you're not going to lose out on that much XP. And you'll get a decent level 6. And it's maybe a little safer to do it that way. And some more bans coming out. Carry TP take out in, taking out a Rubik here, and then Nature's Prophet taken out by the nice little secrets. Ten seconds remaining. Mm -hmm. Some pretty defensive, uh, as well as just kind of uh, bans that deal with the strategy as a whole. Uh, just don't want to deal with any split pushing, um, which is actually kind of surprising considering they do have the Wisp on their side. Maybe it's just a hero they don't want to play uh, against, just because Furion can be so potent to come mid and late game. Uh, as well as the Rubik Band, just a general defensive hero that you can use to uh, kind of get some sort of early 3v3 advantage there. So um, maybe wouldn't be surprised to see a Shadow Demon Band coming from Carry TP as well if they want to continue on that path, as it does very well against Visage as well, just completely negating the fact that you can burst down a hero instantly with uh, Visage's nuke with the disruption. Yeah, I saw that come into play a little last game. We saw actually Shadow Demon as an aggressive tri lane support and then Rubik as a defensive and... It was hilarious. Like, the disruption would go down, and then Rubik would telekinese the person that was trying to layer a stun on top of it, and, like, nothing was coming out of either of them. But then there was still a Visage in that lane, and once those were wasted, Visage was picking up quite a few kills with Soul Assumption after that. But, yeah, right. not, not going to ban out the SD, but maybe KTP picks it up. We saw Swag earlier do a Shadow Demon Visage aggressive tri lane that worked out very well for them. It's a little mm -hmm. awkward, I guess, but once you get that uh, level 2 with the Soul Catcher for the damage burst and then a the Soul Assumption on top remaining. of that, uh, Souls on Souls on Souls, you know, you do a lot of damage. Five seconds yeah, remaining. your farmer would just need to have a follow-up stun. Uh, I mean, Alchemist is a good example, but obviously uh, Elia picking that up for his team there. So um, they could pick up the SD. It wouldn't be bad. I think um, Lanaya's Little Secrets would be more likely to pick up the Shadow Demon in this case, though. Yes, it does go uh, quite nicely with the Alchemist. Just put them under and then throw the Unstable Concoction on top of that. But no, carry to yeah, They're going to take it first. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit of a, yep. hey, it's really, we want it's... it and you want it too sort of pick. 
Dire yeah, team. it's a great pickup, as as we mentioned before, with the soul assumption being able to kind of negate that with a disruption. Uh, it's pretty important, and uh, they realize that and pick it up relatively quickly here. And a lone druid pickup, that's uh, I feel like that's primarily to just have a, in a 1v1 against the darks here. Yeah, and he should do pretty well after um, or with that against the Darkseer, and like you said, it came immediately after the Darkseer pick from Lanai's Little Secrets, uh, so probably a matchup they're looking for there. Yeah, definitely. We'll see what uh, Lanai's Little Secrets wants to pick up here at the end. I would not be surprised with a support pickup, and it's going to be the Jakiro here. Uh, a really nice defensive support in this situation, just because they're going to want to deal, they're, they're going to want to wait for their mid pick for sure. Um, they want to have the last say there, just in case, so that they make sure if it is going to be Weaver going mid, they can deal with that. Uh, and if it's something else, they can deal with it with their last. Yeah, pick I was as just well. about to say um, the Weaver and the Trilly, and it can work out. I know my team's run it a few times and with Five varied levels remaining. of success, but it can catch you off guard. It does force you to buy sentries. Jakiro going to be a good hero to deal with that, though. Reserve time. Mm -hmm. Just waiting on the last uh, band stage. Now we'll see. Most likely, mid hero is going to be banned. Puck, Quap. Uh, general strong into semi carries as Nyx is banned. So, are you familiar with any of the players here for Lanaya's Little Secrets? Do you can you tell us anything about yep. them? Yeah, uh, Barney's a pretty good player. Plays with Blitz a lot. Um, Fan is also a strong player. Alia is a strong player. Um, I'm not too familiar with Hydra and Brunster. I like Hydra's name, um, as I do play some StarCraft. But you know, because <laughs> it's the best game ever, besides Dota 2, of course. Yeah, exactly. And there are the int semi carry bans starting to come into effect. There's the puck right there, and might see a quap ban. We'll see. We'll see if I'm right. And oh, I was like, is OD? No, OD was the first ban out actually by carry TP, so yeah. he's not going to be um, allowed in the mid lane. Neither is puck. If they take out quap, puck, and OD, Batrider is some of the strongest mids in the game right now. So we've been seeing some weird I found matchups a... earlier uh, in the day. Yeah. God, I hate OD so much. I like. I devote most of my time trying to figure out how I'm going to deal with it. I actually found out recently, uh, so if you play Bane in the mid lane and try to rush a Soul Ring, because Soul Ring adds to your maximum mana, you just cast Soul Ring into Enfeeble, and it deals with OD pretty well in the laning phase. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Uh, I saw earlier Swag picked up a Kanka to go against an OD, because, mm -hmm. you know, stealing Int doesn't affect his, uh, his last hitting capabilities. And then Tidebringer so much harassed without using any intelligence at all, and it actually worked pretty well. Well, it worked yeah. very well yeah, for them, but I don't know how even the matchup was, um, you mm -hmm. know, in that match. So it would, you know, Ten maybe a little more investigation, or maybe just go Shadow Demon Kunkka versus a OD sort of deal. Uh, but anyways, the yeah. Quap is taken out, and now we're gonna see these last picks, which yeah. will actually reveal. I feel, I feel really smart now. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> You'd be even smarter if you gave up playing Dota and started casting full time. Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see. <laughs> have you? Did you check the stream at all? The overlays we're using are pretty sick right now. Spent like a whole day. Making yeah, I have them actually. And you even have the end orbit there, so that's awesome. Oh, I made those in advance, just hoping you'd show up. Damn. To... Well played. Well played. But yeah, uh, thinking about their last pick here uh, for a little while now. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is to debate whether they want to run the Weaver mid or not. Um, okay, nope. and that basically says they're not. Yeah. I'm not too sure how much damage they have in this aggressive tri lane because they do have the Shadow Demon, which is going to be almost... Like, you can be offensive with it, but if you do, it's pretty... There isn't really a follow-up stun or anything to hold them there. Yeah, and so I feel like they, they to have happens. to go aggressive. I mean, we've seen... Yes. Like the last couple games in the pro scene and the D2L finals and then whatever was a little after that. The defense playoffs. Free farm alchemist is no good if you're on the team that doesn't have it. It will destroy you pretty much at the 12-15 minute mark. Yeah, exactly. That's a nice bit because we against that. Uh, I mean, no little secret here that Lanaya is being picked. So you think it would have just been probably going to go mid against up, uh, but... Yeah, you know it. <laughs> yeah, Although, how does that funny. do there against aren't that Because you have the fatal bombs it's to take refraction off pretty fast. It actually uh, doesn't negate any of the refraction charges. I believe it's HP removal. I'm not ah, okay. positive though. 
Yes, it's HP removal, so it actually goes through refraction and damages her uh, without taking off any of the charges. Oh, so that's just as which, good. Which uh, is actually pretty good as well. That's better. Yeah. Exactly. It's not bad. Um, I think... The thing about uh, Templar Assassin that a lot of people may not know is that with your refraction, when you cast it and you use it to deny a creep, I believe it does not deduct your refraction charges that you have for uh, offensive attacks. So if you play it pretty smart, you can always just keep denying the creeps uh, and get the CS that way through side blades or just to you know gain a lane advantage, and you can come out quite ahead because of that. So yeah, I did not know that. Um, yeah, there's some pretty. Uh, it, at least that's how it used to be. I'm not too sure if that's been patched or intentional or not. We can, we can pay attention to this not. game to see. Mm -hmm. But let's get into some introductions. Looks like we might have a bit of a, a bungle in the jungle pretty early on. So we've got um, <laughs> CD playing the Visage for carry TP. Uh, they're on the dire. Aries is going to go mid as he is their mid player on that warlock. We've got Minzy here uh, on the lone druid. Going to be that. 1v1 against the Darkseer, probably why they're all scouting the jungle to see where the lanes are going to be. And is that Alvi we've got here on the Shadow Demon for carry TP? And last but not least, battle. Chaser on the Weaver. So that rounds up carry TP. Oh, if you'd like to introduce yeah. Lanai's little secrets. Little, little yeah, before I go into anything, I just want to thank uh, Southpaw Gaming for all his help uh, with everything for this tournament. I'm sure he's been a great help as well. Uh, I'm definitely going to check out the VODs after, which are on his stream, uh, twitch.tv slash southpawgaming. So check those out as well if you miss any of the games like me. Uh, and now going into the Radiant side, Lanai's Little Secrets being captained by Elia playing that Darkseer. Uh, actually, surprisingly enough, the bottom lane is going to be the 1v1 lane with uh, the Darkseer being safe. They might actually switch that right now, yeah. I think Lanai's Little Secrets want to have the 3v1 lanes, whereas the uh, carry TP squad definitely wants to keep it in a 3v3 situation. Uh, moving on, we have Fan playing the Templar Assassin. A nice block for him. He's going to have a little bit of advantage uh, having them on his ramp. Uh, then Hydra is going to be playing the Wisp, uh, just now passing Alia, you know, a uh, general support Wisp. Brunster playing the Jakiro. And finally, last but not least, Barney playing the Carry Alchemist, getting some free farm for the beginning while the lane rotation is being made. Yeah, and picks up Grievous Greed to get that first last hit, so doing pretty well. Five heroes were running around on the uh, the shores of mid lane for a good while, but it looks like finally the lanes are forming, and it is going to be uh, the tri lane versus tri lane, which carry TP arguably won since they kind of rounded up a uh, aggressive tri lane lineup with that visage, and we'll see how that goes for them. This is really greedy from Barney. He's actually skilled uh, Grievel's Greed first, level 1, anticipating that he would get level 2 before a 3v3 would come into effect. So he's basically just a creep right now, uh, without anything. You're he does have a 4 CS already, and he does hit level 2 now, so that's good. You're correct, by the way. I just watched Fan deny, and it didn't take a ref refraction charge off. Yeah, so the more you know, it's actually a great mechanic that a lot of people don't know, and uh, it's pretty sweet. It, it definitely helps with lane control. Alright, and Aaliyah up here, uh, trying to creep skip on this Darkseer, pulls the wave over to the neutrals, gonna try to double farm up the neutrals and the creep wave, but uh, Menzi on side of carry TP with the Lone Druid, giving a lot of harass onto that Darkseer, is getting kinda low, but, you know, farming up pretty well regardless. Well, actually he's not, no last hits, but picking up some XP. Oh. Ooh, did he stun those illusions getting there? pretty low. Yeah, popping the salve, actually. Ice Path goes out by Brunster to maybe try to keep some there, but... No blood on the floor yet. For now, the mid lane looks relatively even. Um, I'm surprised that he actually went the second point in Shadow Word rather than Fatal Bonds. I feel like with Shadow Word, because of the way Refraction works, you're not going to get that much damage out, at least not as much as the Fatal Bonds would with the extra creep getting hit by it. But Rune Control seems to be going the way of Templar Assassin as he has found a haste rune in the top, uh, which will let him be a little bit more aggressive. But uh, in the meantime, you know, the... The 3v3 lane seems okay for both teams so far. Alchemist is still getting CS, he has 6, up against the 8 of Weaver, so nothing too big of a, a difference just now. Yeah, and I'd expect, saw an Alchemist last game, uh, faced with a similar situation. Most likely just going to skill up Unstable Concoction and Grievel's Greed, uh, as I guess since you're defensive you don't really want to get Acid Spray, because then you're going to push out the eight lane Equilibrium like against yourself, so... Probably not going to be picking that up too early. And then in the top lane, check out the CS there. Darkseer with 6, Lone Druid with 9, so Lone Druid doing a, a good job here. Darkseer is he's okay against Lone Druid as the Spirit Bear will take a lot of damage from uh, double Ion Shells as they're level 2 right now. 
Uh, but the resummon yep. already available for Minzy. Yep. So he, he should be fine there. Elia might actually uh, top tower is under take a little bit extra damage, but it seems like uh, the Lunder is just going to go back up to the top to almost free farm, I guess, under the tower, which is going to let Elia have his soul ring uh, if he wants it, which he doesn't actually go for. He goes for a bottle in this case. A little interesting. Maybe just wants some more mana. Uh, able to get some runes, but anyway, disruption in the bot lane onto Hydra, immediately tethering out onto Barney there. Uh, the wow. ice path to buy some time as well. Unstable concoction, can it go out? The disruption has 15 seconds, so no one's gonna be able to use it. Looks like the first blood's gonna be drawn. It's gonna go the way of Lanai's Little Secrets. The twin-headed dragon on the side of Lanai's Little Secrets picks it up, and Wisp goes down as a quick rebuttal kill from Chaser. Saguchi only level two, still a decently long cooldown. Throw the stun immediately. He does. Chaser, I think, gonna go down here. <gasps> no, dodges his <laughs> stun, but a disruption there. Where's the sentry at? Oh no, that was his teammate. Just kidding. And wow, Ice Path almost actually picked up another kill. So one for one, but the first blood goes the way of Lanaya's little secrets. So well done to the the defensive tri lane there. I'm pretty sure the Ice Path was up. That was a little bit of a blunder there, disrupting the Weaver while he was running away, as he they didn't have any vision of him. So uh, maybe, I mean, I was pretty surprised at that, but if he had timed his Ice Path correctly, uh, the Weaver was only on 17 health. That definitely would have been able to kill him. But a nice kill, a nice first blood going the way of Lanaya's little secrets, as you had mentioned. Um, Alchemist trying to get the last hit there, but it in fact goes the way of the Jakiro. So, uh, you know, it's still a first blood. It's still going to give them a little bit of an advantage in the lane. Let's see how the last hits have been going for Minzy. So Lone Druid, another reason he's decent against Darkseer is when Darkseer creep skips in this 1v1 situation, you can last hit at the tower very easily with the bear and yourself combined. Uh, so Darkseer the most farmed right now with 24, Lone Druid close to 21, and then Lanaya, uh, fan in the mid lane, gonna be at 22. And you know, Warlock doing okay. He's at 17, so he's finding some farm. There are quite a few denies on fan. Uh, he's up to 12, and only 6 here on Ares, but, you know, looks like he's going for a Midas, and he's going to have it in around 6 minutes if he doesn't die here in the next couple seconds. Yep, uh, pretty risky, depending on how much aggression Lanaya's Little Secrets want to put on in the early to mid-game, as they do have a pretty potent lineup for that situation. Templar Assassin, you can never really underestimate her damage because of Refraction, as well as the fact that uh, once Wisp hits level 6, come the mid-game, it's very easy to kind of catch people out of position. So going the Midas means that they want to kind of play passively in their lanes, but at the same time, they may want to stay closer together as 5 just to deal with uh, having the Wisp on the other team. Yeah, uh, well, I agree with the Midas more than just rushing Ags. Uh, maybe he goes Midas and then Mac mm -hmm. into an Ags, and with the boost from the Midas, uh, if they're able to have a good game and not get ganked up by the Wisp, it'll it'll be worth it in the long run, obviously. That's how Midas works, but I don't know. We'll just have yeah. to wait and see how that lane goes, but he'll have it pretty soon. And um, while we were talking about that, Darkseer forced out of the top lane. The Orb of Venom on the bear doing a bit of damage. Now that Lone Druid's level 6, uh, was level 5 when they kind of fought top, the risk of the entangle sends Darkseer back to base to heal. Maybe he TP's bot to go for a fight, but not level 6, doesn't have wall, just gonna head right back to top. Yeah, generally a pretty solid play so far from both teams coming out. Um, neither team has that much of an advantage in the lane yet. Uh, just the same thing happening in the aggro try that I was a bit worried about, the fact that they don't really have a follow-up to Shadow Demon's disruption. So, like, uh, in the first blood engagement, for example, they had disrupted someone, but then uh, the nice little secret try line just completely went on them without any fear, because Shadow Demon isn't going to get a disruption off, and neither other hero there has a, a stun, a, a way of kind of stopping the fight. Yeah, so they're finding themselves in an aggressive tri lane where An or Alvi can't really use his disruption. Like, they have to wait to use that. That's pretty much the only thing that's holding their lane together. But then there's very little kill potential in that sense. So it, it becomes kind of a, a tricky situation for carry TP to deal with. We'll see if any rotations come out of them into the, maybe the mid lane, um, if they're worried about that. As the mid lane has now kind of opened up a little bit for the Templar Assassin. He's sitting at 39 and 17 compared to the 21 and 8 of the Warlock. Well, Warlock does pick up his Midas, however. So. Well, Aaliyah being chased out again in the same exact place I saw it happen last time. Trying to pull the creep wave down there, uh, get some farm, but not going to be able to. Gets zoned out again. Fear of an entangle. Well, he's healed up a bit uh, using some bottle charges. And let's see, are we going to have a fight? The camp is blocked as Alvi uh, drops a ward in there, so they can't do any uh, pulls, which I don't think they've really got many off, but that's going to hurt Wisp a little bit. Uh, level 4 right now is this Wisp. Uh, so not doing terrible. And Warlock actually kills in the mid lane. Looks like Yellow rotated over, but they're going to get Chaser in the bot. Tether stun up. 
can they keep him there long enough? I don't know. And then Barney now taking a lot of damage. Soul Assumption and Shadow Demon uh, Soul Catcher lands as well. So Brunster looks like rotated to the mid lane. Yeah, and they yep. took the and kill the there. And the Warlock didn't have enough mana. Yeah. Now a haste rune. They're going for Minzy. Minzy's in trouble. He's uh, level 6. He's got his ult. He's got to shift into it right now. The Ice Path goes out. Going to catch a minute. That's going to be another quick kill. So Fan picks up a kill there. Uh, did he get the kill in the mid lane as well? Yes. No. Oh, it was split in the mid lane actually. So, Well, Fan picks yep. up a kill and has an assist now. 50 last hits around the 9 minute mark. So doing very well. Got the phase boots great rotation, but at the same time. Rotation on the bot lane. Yeah, bot lane there. Ares comes down. He uses the golem. He's not controlling it right now, but I don't know if that's really going to matter. Oh. Wow, commits suicide with the unstable concoction. Uh, well played there by... Uh, i got to remember these names. Who's playing that? Is that Barney? That's going to be Barney, yeah. And that great play there, I mean, they get nothing out of the four-man rotation. And on the other side, Lanai's Little Secrets, with their rotation from Jakiro in the mid lane, get a kill. Jakiro and Templar Assassin to the top lane get a kill. And they get a tower out of this in the top. So it looks like it's probably going to be a tower trade here. But uh, definitely um, coming out ahead there, Lanai's Little Secrets. Have to agree. We'll check the graph here in just a little bit. So, a little bit. Maybe let this tower in the bot lane go down. Uh, I believe they're going to win the feed that lasted the chaser, but it doesn't look like anyone's going to get it. With a courier just deliver. Uh, I think it's that finished ring of Aquila, Aquila, Aquila there for Weaver. <laughs> and we can see LLS 2k gold lead and uh, a little over a 2k XP lead. Alchemist being scared but seems like he's gonna have some free farm time now as everyone's kind of rotated out of the bot lane which is going to be very nice to him uh he does have two points in the grievals greed there so um doing pretty well but i think the main uh problem for carry tp is going to be this templar assassin sitting on 53 s uh 53 wow 53 s <laughs> 53 cs in 10 minutes uh doing very well for himself as well as having a kill as well as an assist without dying in the mid lane yeah, so they've shut down the Alka a little bit in terms of farm, but he's not as far as behind as it seems since the Grievous Greed. Mm -hmm. uh, although maybe he is. He's only 2.5k net worth compared to TA, 4.6, and then Weaver, uh, Warlock, and LD all ahead of him. But now, like you said, gonna but find some space. Ultimate. Yeah, exactly. The ultimate bounce back hero, really. Yeah, and even with the, the recent nerf to Chemical Rage, the amount of health you get, he's still just getting picked up time and time again, so... Who yep. knows? Maybe going to be the hero of TI3, which I'm so excited for. I'm so excited as well. I can't wait. Actually getting pretty excited. Fans uh, playing incredibly well. For the finals of this tournament, as we're finally seeing some uh, some solid teams emerge, although I did expect both of these teams to be good. I've cast carry TP before in Sivo, and I've, you know, pubbed with them quite a few times, so I know what they're all about. I uh, haven't seen <laughs> Lanai's Little Secrets, but I heard a bit about them going into this tournament. And I don't know if they showed up today, but talking about practices in here, and they're really good, so... Yeah. Look forward to seeing them they play They definitely are. Soon. Alia's... Their captain's a great player, uh, their carry's a great player, and I'm sure... I mean, we've seen some great plays coming out of the supports, as well as the mid-player fan, so... Um, you know, definitely a matchup that is very exciting to be able to cast for between two really good... Alright, we see... Uh... And uh, the five-man. Aaliyah here, trying to just zone out, I guess, with this Ion Shell. Stop this push a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough as the Ion Shell creep already bursted down, the tower now being pushed up. So just getting that 5-man Dota underway. They've got the Warlock ult, they might as well use it to enforce uh, some 5-man dominance while they can. But here comes Fan. I don't know how I feel about this rotation. Um, they did end up TPing the Jakiro down here, and even uh, Fan had made his way down, but there wasn't really a way of being able to stop this push, especially considering that is not what Alchemist nor Wisp wants to do right now. Wisp's top priority is to hit level 6 as quickly as possible, and Alchemist is to bounce back. They can't deal with this 5-man, especially considering the fact that the Warlock Golem is just now coming back up, so maybe it would have been a bit better to put some more pressure on the mid. Uh, maybe probably won't get the trade out, but at least get some damage on the tower. Maybe force a... Uh, a TP. Wisp gonna hit six off of this wave though, and then Alchemist already level eight, gonna be eight and a half. The push still He's coming though attack. from carry TP. Uh, the Midas is up, gonna use another Midas charge. The Rock is up as well, so Chaotic Offering ready to be unleashed upon the enemy team. Uh, maybe trying to make a trade, get the tier one bot for a tier two top. It's not quite worth it, but I don't know what else they can really do at this point. This is ideal for carry TP. 
This is very ideal. I mean, they can't use the Wisp for any pickoffs. They have to use it to engage in the uh, top lane, which looks like they might want to do right now. A nice ice path from Brunster. The Wisp TP comes in behind, but the Rock drops on them. Hydra getting pretty low. Is he going to drop? I don't know. It's Chaser is going to go down first here in this fight. Barney with the Ion Shell just running, trying to do as much damage as possible. Uh, Fatal Bonzo looks like it's going to take out Wisp there, as now the team fight is just being spread out here. Uh, Alvi trying to run away. The concoction gonna get him, but there's a nice root from the bear. Is it gonna save Alvi? No, it's not. Fans there with the last. Hit. That's a double kill for him. Now Lone Druid trying to run away. So LLS, uh, the initiation there by Brunster. Take a really nice fight, and Minzy, nice ice path by Brunster. I thought he was gonna get out since he's so tanky, but no. Triple kill for Fan, and that's exactly who they don't want to be getting kills. The one hero that has the ability to semi carry out through the mid game while Alk catches up. Yep. Uh, what a great fight there. Uh, really nice initiation, really nice thought process and how they wanted to engage. Uh, great timing from the stun also. Uh, Barney's stun did a lot of damage and caused a lot of confusion. And that Warlock Golem just really didn't do enough. Um, a, a great fight for Lanai's Little Secrets, and that puts them pretty ahead uh, come the mid-game now. Yeah, talking about XP lead right now, they've got about a 7k XP lead as well as a 3k gold lead, so feeling... Uh... Pretty good, probably where they need to be given the lineup they're going against. And obviously the XP, well now it's six to three, so they got some more kills. But five man dodoing for a while uh, is carry TP, thus the the lack of XP. We'll see uh, how they decide to react. I mean. The way they reacted before, once Wisp hit 6, was great. They stayed as 5, they didn't really allow for any pickoffs. But now that they're a bit behind, they have to be a little bit greedier, in the sense that they want to still try to get farm on their cores. So this allows for a really opportune time for Wisp to capitalize on that. Uh, depends on how they're really warding. Um, in terms of the warding for now, uh, f for the Radiant, at least on the bot lane, they are able to spot uh, the Shadow Demon going in kind of alone, which might provide another Wisp gank. We'll see if that's what they decide to do. Can't even see that ward on the mini map for some reason. But anyway, hold that thought in the mid lane. Ares in a bit of trouble. He's got the heal. It might be enough, just enough for him to live, actually. Fan maybe in trouble. No, looks like he should be okay. Maybe not. Chaser now catching up. Visage throws out a soul assumption. Not going to be enough to kill anyone. Barney on the backside of this, along with Wisp in tow. Hedra taking a lot of hits from that. Familiar's doing some damage. One last auto attack. Wow, that leaves Barney. There is a half a second left on that relocate. Now Barney's got to run out of here. He's got a Perseverance, so is he going Battle Fury build here instead of a Shadow Blade? Uh, maybe just to bounce back like a little harder. A nice disruption, just going to hold him there, make sure he doesn't get away. And Barney's going to go down, so carry TP. Uh, I guess LLS feeling pretty good about themselves, going in for a fight past the Tier 1 all the way into a Tier 2. Yep. And then getting caught a little off guard, opening the door for a possible Roshan for carry TP. Just way too greedy from them. Way too greedy. Uh, they had the free kill on the Shadow Demon bottom with the Wisp teleport, deciding not to go for it, instead diving really hard, um, especially with an Alchemist going, as you had mentioned, such a greedy build. Hand of Midas into Battle Fury. The real reason you pick up a Battle Fury on that hero is to be able to just farm even more. Farm the jungle, farm everything. And uh, uh oh, looks Good like- fan go? I thought he was going for the Dendi steal, then he blinked yeah. and now he's got hit by a Chaotic Offering. No. He's picked off there. Uh, Lone Druid's actually gonna get that kill. So nice uh, gold for him in the bank, and then Roshan gonna go down as well. Who last hits it? It's gonna yep. be Teal. That's Lone Druid, last hits Rosh as well. Top tower is under attack. Yep, that, that was three pretty big wins all in a row. They get the Alchemist kill, they get the Templar Assassin kill, and they get the Roshan there. So carry TP finding a way into this game, uh, looking to, you know, take this uh, game two, I think you said? No, is these are all just best of one, things? so this will be a best of one in okay. the round of 16. Okay, great. So. You know, round it's of a winner eight, take all format. Round here. of four tomorrow, start the best of three. Not tomorrow, oh, excuse me, the twenty fifth. The the round of eight and the round of four are gonna be best of threes. Strange to say. And I'm pushing this wait. tower, using the golem, using the bear. It looks like the bear may get picked off here, the vacuum, ion shell, yeah, gonna go the way of Bronster on the Jakiro. Minzy though in a lot of trouble. Uh, Barney's tethered up going against him right there with an ion shell on his face as well. So yeah, Lone Druid gonna be taken out. Who had the Aegis then? Did they give it to Weaver? Yeah, so Weaver has the Aegis. Generally, you don't want to give the Aegis to the Lone Druid, only because when he does respawn, he, he respawns, respawns in range normal. form. Yeah, exactly. So he's just going to get melted. Yeah, the only time to do that is when your Spirit Bear is fat, because the Spirit Bear will live through the... Uh... Yeah be able to attack but with the ta ta is a hero that actually excels at just bursting down that spirit bear uh, pretty early on until it picks up uh, even after it picks up an ac and uh and all that jazz 
And speaking of the TA, he ended up opting for a pretty high mobility build, uh, picking up the drums after the Blink Dagger. Um, gives him a lot of survivability, a lot of mobility there, as I had mentioned. And uh, they really need him to be, you know, working on the sides of these fights, picking off the supports, picking off Warlock if possible. Um, so far, so good. He had one interesting play, as we had seen near the Roche Pit. He blinked onto the SD, trying to get the one shot. I actually thought he was going for the steal as well. Um, I feel like he should have had a trap in there as well. Um, but, I mean, opting to go for the kill didn't work out too well and gets killed in the process. Yeah, the only thing I can think of with the high mobility build here is maybe since CTP or carry TP is sort of five manning, not so much right now, uh, being a little greedier, I guess, since that they just kind of took a slight advantage, I guess. The gold and XP graph still in LS's favor, but feeling a lot better for carry TP than when, where they were when it was six to three. But the split push for fans, so if CTP is five manning, you know, he can blink in, he can blink into the trees and TP out if he needs to, and just maybe split push another tower. Well, this is when the greed starts for the Alchemist. Uh, he has now picked up his Battle Fury, going to be farming really hard, um, and it's going to work out really well for him, I find. Uh, I would like to see him go an Assault Querist almost as quickly as possible, getting the extra armor up against the Bear, even against the Weaver, uh, works very well in their favor. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. He doesn't really have to initiate the tank in. I mean, TA can sort of blink in and meld or blink in and refract exactly. and do some damage. Or just get focused down. It won't really matter if Alchemist, you know, brings the fight after that. He's gonna yep. take the Shadow Demon out in just a couple of hits. And does Battle Fury Cleave work on Familiars? I would think it would, but I'm not positive. Uh, I'm not positive either, actually. Another good Ice Path well, from Brunster, they want to fight and a vacuum wow. wall on everyone, so a nice wall. The Fatal Bonds and the Rock drop, though Ares is going to die after that. And then the Aegis Weaver is down, he's going to be resounding pretty shortly. The Hedra is somehow still alive on that Wisp, looks like he's going to be TP'd back to base, so able to live after that. So, a two for one trade, the Darkseer goes down after a beautiful wall, he buys back, Wisp somehow lives. And they're going to pick off Visage there in the mid lane uh, on top of that. So a three for one trade uh, go on the way of LLS. And Darkseer buys back just to continue this push, but Aaliyah with a beautiful yep. wall vacuum. And that really won them the fight. I mean, uh, it looked like Carry TV wanted to continue to fight there. They dropped their rock, but they were fighting in the vacuum, into uh, in the wall, sorry. And uh, didn't work out too well for them, a 3 for 1 trade. And Brunster doing a lot of, actually, a lot of AoE damage with Max Dual Breath and Ice Path. Hasn't even worried about Macro Pyre yet. <laughs> yeah, that's a really interesting build. I can see the, the point of it though, because there's really, I guess the wall's up now, so I think he'll be getting Macro Pyre obviously at level 9, but now that the wall's up, and that wall vacuum is really what you want to combo the Macro Pyre with, maybe that's why he held out. Maybe. Um, I do think that with the Lanaya traps, with a lot of, you know, they have a lot of slows, they have the vacuum back into Ice Path as well, um, he could have afforded to go level in Macro Pyre earlier. Uh, as it does do a lot of significant damage, as well as uh, zoning out uh, certain areas for yeah, them. It does usually split the fight um, in half early on. <laughs> which might be good for them in this case, but, you know, uh, this build's working well for him. Who am I to discredit it? <laughs> and now it doesn't even matter, because he's picked up a point in it, so... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And let's see, so CD on the Visage, he's got a Buckler, he's got a Headdress and a Medallion, getting pretty close to that Mechanism pickup, which will be a nice uh, core item for them, maybe survive a little bit longer, but if we keep seeing walls like that from Aaliyah, it's, it might not matter, as he already has a Mechanism, had it for a while, most likely working yep. towards, I'd say a Pipe, because of all the magic damage, but the Blink Darkseer is just... I was gonna say. It's coming alive, and it's how much gold he's saying, I, I think he's going for Blink right here, just more initiation, better think... walls. Yeah, it would be a really good pickup for him. Um, just the the extra initiation. They can also use their surge instead on the alchemist and have him be a huge threat. I mean, he does a lot of damage right now. He actually ended up picking up a shadow blade, uh, um, maybe opting for an assault curse after. But the shadow blade at this early in the game is really going to let him uh, find these solo pickoffs whenever he really wants. Yeah, normally we've been seeing the Shadow Blade first into an AC, but I think this game Barney wanted to catch up, so he just got that uh, Battle Fury to jungle and uh, clear waves really quickly to then catch up to get the to get the Shadow Blade. Maybe we see a BKB next. Uh, definitely BKB or AC is going to be next. Uh, I would have to say for that Alchemist. Yeah, um, I would like to see the AC still. 
um, just providing the extra tank ability. Closer and closer to his level 16 as well. He's only level 13 and a half right now, but when he does hit it, he does have the extra health there. And uh, it might depend also on what the Darkseer does opt to get if he does go for the blink. He's going for he Ags. For he let us down. The Ags. Aaliyah let oh, us yeah, down. That's right. I mean, Ags <laughs> is still going to be great. They still have that initiation mm -hmm. with the Ice Path, apparently, is how they've been getting these fights at their towers versus even the Warlock. The Ice Path to start things yeah. off disrupted a little bit. Darkseer surges in, and then you've got the uh, the blinking TA and uh, what's his uh, Alchemist to follow up after that, who also has Invis now, too, can also initiate with that. Yeah, I'm not too sure how much I like the Black King Bar here, pick up by uh, the Templar Assassin, and if Alchemist were to go it as well. Um, it really deals primarily with, I guess, the Visage. I mean, Warlock's ultimate's gonna go through BKB, uh, the Bear and Tangles are gonna go through BKB, Shadow, Shadow Demon. Demon's Purge. Yeah, there's a lot of factors, and even Weaver, I mean, he doesn't do magic damage. That's not what you're worried about there, uh, in that case. So I, I feel like extra burst would be better, or even just survivability for your team, rather than just picking up the BKB. Yeah, I don't think Alk's gonna go for it then. I think maybe, since mm -hmm. Darkseer's not going blink, wow, Barney farming up a huge ancient stack, and that's why yep. Alchemist is good. Um, yeah. Acid Spray These supports doing them. a great job. Yeah. Uh, really nice job by the support stacking the jungle for Alchemist when he hit his Battle Fury, as well as stacking the Ancients for him. So, a lot of his success there definitely attributed to the great Yeah, now he's about 4k gold. Uh -huh. I think this Darkseer here, that's who's under that, in a bit of trouble. Vacuums almost everyone onto the Cliff or Cliff Party, but doesn't quite work. Darkseer, Aaliyah, <laughs> gonna be picked off there. Um, one versus five. Yeah, that would have been pretty unreal. A little greedy there. Um, they did have traps, they did have illusions there as well to make sure. He did get his surge off, but he got disrupted right away, so. Let's see Alk here after and that he... ancient stack. 5k gold right now, which is a BKB, so I think he's definitely going AC. TA maybe just getting the BKB so she can blink and pop the BKB, live longer than she should, Radiance and then everything to follow up after that. Attack. And the AC is going to help Fire's a lot, uh, not only for pushing actually top lane, like to they're just going to, wow, not even to get a kill, just to trade the towers. The mid tier one drops, KTB picks that up, and then immediately LLS, the nice little secrets, get the top tier too. So a nice trade for them, but can they defend this tier too? Doesn't look like it based on the positioning of the Alchemist and everything. Um, I feel like this is going to be a free tower, and then they just back out as five. I would just leave the familiars here to get this last hit and leave. Nice try by Alia there. Yeah, so they try to get the Nylon Druid, going to last hit. It looks like his bear almost has a Maelstrom, so going for that build now, since he can't go to the Armlet. And uh, I don't know if he was doing well to get a Radiance, but Ares, wow, stunned up max time. Might be in a bit of trouble. Familiar stun's going to save him there. Ice Path not going to land either. There's a vacuum from Aaliyah, but this the spirit bear that fight. resummoned Ags, though, finished up on Ares. He drops the double rock, and Aaliyah gets the wall down, but no good. vacuum to follow up. The Macropy is there zoning a bit. Uh, Golem's taking some damage from that now. CTP on the chase. Fan is here. He's got the BKB finish. They can turn this if they want, but that's Barney and Aaliyah down. And then Brunster dropping on the Jakiro as well. Uh, a buyback yep. from Chaser. Why didn't this he buy back time lapse? Why does no one do that when we watch I, them? I know, I think he should have. Wisp coming in alone here. The fight continues. Yeah, seriously, Fan pops the BKB now. A little later into the fight, didn't pop it earlier. Being chased, Root Gaming. Gonna pop it off right there. Orb of Venom eating through that refraction. And Fan's gonna go down. Now 13 to 12, four kills. And I believe Lanizo Secrets got two. And then Chaser did a buyback here. Uh, that was a great bait by Carry TP. They backed out very well together, baiting the aggression forwards, and then they got a really nice fight on their high ground. There was a little bit of two separate fights occurring, but it was perfect for them. They got the Warlock Golems on two heroes uh, on the low ground there, and uh, just perfect play by them. They get four kills, I think even five kills at the end of that. Then no one is super high level, so the respawn's pretty quick there. Brewster's Ice Path in a vacuum going to catch out the Shadow Demon. So Shadow Demon goes down. CD uh, also in a similar problem here. Is the, are they going to get the Familiar as well? Looks like they do. Fan's going to pick that up. And now Chaser just running off, uh, scurrying through the woods, going to get out of there. And we saw Lone Druid TP out a little bit before that. I didn't realize he went to Midas. So he went to Midas. Now he's got a Maelstrom up as well. So the uh, Creep Waves, yeah. beware. You're going to die to that Spirit Bear. So this Alchemist with his 6.4k gold ended up buying a full big KB and still having 2800 gold left over. Um, I mean, interesting that he's not picking up these items right away. That's all I can say here. Um, I understand saving for buyback, but that was saving for buyback and heart almost. Yeah, pretty much. 
And it looks like he did decide to go with the BKB, which we kind of already discussed. So now I gotta expect the AC coming up next. Can buy the Hope Hyperstone from the shop, but I think they're just gonna give him the Aegis yeah. here. As yeah. they take that Roche really fast. Acid Spray, great at doing that. Does anyone have a Medallion? Uh, Visage does, but that's the wrong team, so no, but it no, doesn't really no matter. Else. It melts anyways. The armor reduction yeah, yeah, from Meld. definitely helps. Yep. And there's the Hyperstone, so about 300 gold away, Minzy will have that Maelstrom. Or MJ, excuse me. The Mjolnir. The full deal. Let's see, Aaliyah yep. close to uh, Ags? Pretty close. 1,000 off. Hmm? Alchemist back to 4,000 gold. I mean, the rich, he's, he's getting richer. <laughs> he is the rich. Alk is the 1%. Yeah. <laughs> Doing work right now. How much does AC cost? Is it 5,900? Not positive, actually. Uh, 5,400 or so. 5,350. So yeah, he's almost got it. He's 1,000 off from a full AC, just straight up buying it if he wants it. Um, I guess, well, probably just let the Aegis expire before you buy it, or sell the Midas. I don't know if, if you really need a Midas on an Alchemist all that much. And the charge has been up for a while, he hasn't used it, but... Oh, approaching 5k gold. He's... Wow. So much gold. Has an AC. And yeah. like two more last hits. And smoked up yeah, here is carry TP. They're looking for plus. blood, but they're not going to find anyone. Three heroes uh, for LLS in the mid lane, and then two top. That's going to be Fan and Aaliyah. Uh, just trying to get the push going to the tier 3, which has taken a little bit of damage. But meanwhile, maybe going to get this tier 2 quickly, force Fan to TP back. Or let it go, I don't know. They're not really in a position to do anything uh, against this push right now. Yeah, this is going to be actually uh, really nice for uh, LLS here on the top lane. They use the Wisp ultimate there, as well as Barney and Fan with a DD hitting on it. They're going to get a free base tower, forcing the ultimate from the Warlock. Yeah, and then Barney and doesn't even care about it. Barney just quickly. kills one. Oh, what a kill two if Wisp didn't take him away. Barney's like, come on, let's fight like men. Was... Yeah, it was a good Wisp play though, saving his uh, player there. Definitely, he would have died if he had been uh, left alone. I kind of missed that uh, TP over there. I was looking for what Alk did with his Midas. I think he just sold it. I was trying to check the courier in the ground and base, so yeah. Pretty sure he Most sold likely. the Midas to so just buy the AC. Doesn't You don't really need it. I don't know how early he got it. I kind of was slacking off on the item progression. And uh, We see Fan at 2.5k gold. We got Aaliyah. Where are you at, Aaliyah? You are 250 gold away from an Ags. Check out the other team. Chaser has the Lincolns. Uh, probably MKB or Deso gonna be next. He's at 2k gold, so not too far off from another big item. Uh, wow, with the Midas from Ares, he's got 2.7k gold with an Ags. Refresher, not too far off at that rate. Uh, if he can uh, not die here. And Jakiro just supporting. That's what's I mean, that's what he's going to want. The Refresher is going to be really important. They can really only fight with Warlock's ultimate right now. As you had seen in the previous mid uh, engagement there, it was a 1 for 4 or so, uh, where they got 4 pickoffs because of the great Warlock ultimate on the ramp. But then they overextended, they didn't have their Warlock ultimate, and uh, it really showed uh, as when LLS bought back, they just didn't have anything really to worry about in that case. And it looks like Visage going for an Ags here with this point booster, which is a little interesting. I don't know if a pipe would... how much magic damage is there? There's not a whole lot. I guess passing through the wall does about, what, 150 and then the Ion Shell. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of magic damage, so maybe not needing it. Just trying to get an Ags up to get uh, three familiars, just more chain stunning. And speaking of an Ags, looks like Aaliyah going to finish his up now. Or hers up. I don't yeah, know. Is uh, it a girl? I'm not sure. Uh, they're gonna try to catch the Weaver here. Doesn't look like he's gonna get it. Uh, Barney stuns himself. Uh, Chaser escapes with his life. Uh, he's working on a Desolator from what I think, at least with that Mithril Hammer. Probably not gonna be a BKB as he already does have that Lincolns for the magic defense. Yeah, I'd expect a Deso. It seems pretty common these days. I, I guess I credit that to EG. They seem to swear by it. Although I'm sure a lot of teams have been doing it for a long while as Dota has been out for like 12 years. And yeah, everyone's just sort of farming up right now. Fan has blinked into the trees. Still sort of chasing the chaser, which maybe isn't the best idea. 
He's actually banking a lot of gold as well. If you look at the last hits right now, something really interesting. Uh, the three cores doing really well in finding their farm for Lanaya's little secrets. They are the top three farmers in this game. Um, and all of them have very comfortable farm for 32 minutes into this game. So, uh, you know, really uh, the efficiency that you can find from this team is really, really nice to watch. 250 CS in 33 minutes is great, but so is 173 and so is 165. When you see the lead farmer of uh, of your opposition having less than your uh, what you would consider to be your three, that's when you know things are going really well and uh, really optimizing everything. Yeah, and pretty much the only reason for the kills being so close is just the huge ultimate with that uh, that rock. And then the lone druid is farming pretty good on his own, right? He's what? Where is that last hit window? He's 137, so it's not amazing. But given that they've been sort of five manning against a wisp, I'd say it's still pretty good. And that Wisp helps definitely with the uh, the presence so that they can farm so much on the side of LLS. But you pointed out earlier how well they were stacking Ancient, stacking Jungle, all for this Alchemist. So clearly a very efficient unit. Yeah. Um, we'll see what carry TV can do now. I mean, they're falling further and further behind the more this goes on as Alchemist with, uh, with Grievous Greed as well. Actually, his... Uh, you know, this is the time to engage if they're if they want to. Uh, his Aegis has just expired about five seconds ago or so, so uh, a smoke right now would be really opportune. Or they can just try to hold out to the late game. It's going to be pretty hard to go late game against this lineup, though. Yeah, all whoa, wrong hockey to talk. That was weird. Already, we can see that Barney is uh, destroying the golems. They drop if Barney's BKB'd up. You know, doesn't get bursted. He like three hits both golems with that battle fury. He's going to have enough money, uh, probably for a Bash or a Abyssal Blade, going to be the next item, I would imagine. Uh, pretty much the best thing you can get against a Weaver. And he's pretty close at another 5.3k gold. Yep. Uh, still a lot more passive, though. I mean, there was a lot of action, but it's, it's kind of dwelling down a little bit more slow-paced. Trying to find... Uh, Carry TV just trying to capitalize on any mistakes now, and then... Uh, you know, there's no reason for LLS to do anything at the moment, as they are comfortably ahead, and they'll keep getting more ahead. Uh, Basher now picked up on Barney. He's probably going to go for the uh, Abyssal. Yeah, and then AC finished up there on the Lone Druid. And I didn't even realize the advantage that they've accumulated. I haven't checked in like 10 minutes. And they're at a 13,000, 14,000 gold lead, and same for XP. So LLS pretty far ahead, despite the kills. Being 14 to 13, and definitely due to the farming of Alk, TA, and Darkseer, as we pointed out a little while ago. Yeah. Um, Warlock getting closer. Uh, he's about 800 gold away from his refresher. That's a uh, very important item for them right now. I think that's one of the most important items. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, Alk, if he lives, he's just going to get 400 gold out of that. Oh, I guess not. It reduces the amount of gold you get to, like, 35 per golem, but since he's got the Ags... Yeah, I mean, that and the Deso from Weaver are probably the most important items right now. Just waiting for uh, just waiting for those items, and maybe they'll go for a smoke. They could also be waiting for the Roshan, as we can see, spawning in about 2 minutes' time at around 38 minutes. Um, we'll see if a fight happens around there, or if uh, one of the teams decide to back down, or even try to sneak it. I think Chaser just farming for buyback, because he has the money to pick up the Deso. The Mithril Hammer is sitting on their uh, Star Ladder courier over there, so... Most likely what he's doing. Uh, Ags, and we've got another Ogre Club. So I think Aaliyah just going to BKB as well off of this. It's just really ensure that he always gets off his wall combo because it is a big part of their team fight. Duplicate that mm -hmm. Weaver who's got a Deso. You're going to do a lot of damage. And yeah, still very passive game right now. Uh, LLS, I was about to say, pretty content to sit farming, but as soon as I do that, they smoke up and they're looking for blood right now. And if they find anyone, they're going to find uh, CTP's Alvi on the Shadow Demon or Minzy in the mid lane. Shadow Blading in here. Trap goes off. Minzy in a lot of trouble. Doesn't have the AC. Oh, there it is. It's on the bear, actually. But Minzy going to be taken down immediately. Brunster throws out an ice path. They hold Alvi there. Now they're chasing. The trap going to go off on Alvi. He's the only other one here, so it's going to be two pickoffs as the rest of CTP has a ran back into the base because they know without that spirit bear, they have no chance. Yep, and those are two very important pickoffs considering neither of them have any buyback. So uh, it's going to be 5v3 for the next 30 seconds. But there will be four golems as Ares just picked up his refresher orb. So at least they have that going for them. And maybe they don't even pressure the racks here. This is a good opening to get Roche in 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 20 seconds. 
Dyer's middle tower is under or just go for Rax. It's gonna go down so fast. Very nice. Got Dyer's tower with minus five armor right now because of that AC divine. doing work to it. Dyer's the wall goes down just to zone, actually. Ice path being sent out to zone. Uh, some little vision there as well. And now going for the Rax. If they want to fight, they're gonna have to run wow. right through this wall. But no, just gonna go for the this two is three tower. So safe. Yeah. So safe. They don't want to risk anything right now. Um, both heroes now completely respawned. It's five on five, and this is the reason. Roshan has respawned. Uh, they did pressure, and they're gonna be able to probably get this. Considering Fan, we'll see what happens. Hit it twice and got it to half health. Now that Barney shows up, the Roche is dead. Familiar goes in. Can they stun and get the uh, snipe the Aegis? Perhaps. Oh. No. The rocks go down over the tree as well. But it's not gonna matter. TA oh, picks up okay. that and the refresher all doing a lot of damage, but no, Barney <laughs> just cleans it up. Goodbye, golems. Wow. Now the rest of CTP Damn. coming in here. Fan running away. He's gonna go down, so that pops the ages. Barney's pretty low. Uh drops the acid spray. Going on Weaver, bash on Weaver. Can he get another one? He did sort of. Uh disruption over here, fight still going on. Darkseer. Uh, doesn't have the wall, still on cooldowns. He's doing a lot of damage with Ion Shell. Able to lift for a little while, drops his gem. Chaser picks up a double kill, but so does Fan after respawning from the Aegis. And then Aerie's gonna go down. Barney just punch him in the face. And Chaser with the triple kill now, picks up the Deso later. And now it looks like he is just going another BKB. The bugs go out. There's a stun. Looks like that's gonna be the death of Alvi. Maybe. We'll see. Wow. What a wow. fight for carry TP there. That was all spearheaded by the uh, really nice Warlock play as well as uh, the Visage play using the stuns on his familiars, as well as the Ags plus Refresher uh, ultimate there, the Chaotic Offering. That did so much work. Uh, TA's Aegis was popped pretty much at the beginning of the fight. Both support heroes, the Wisp as well as the Akira, were dead almost instantly as a result, and they just cleaned up there. That was fantastic. Uh, all three cores do have buyback, though, for Lanai's Little Secrets. We'll see what happens. Uh, free kill now for Chaser oh, on the Akira. Yeah, and he's going to keep on pressuring a little bit. Wants to force the buybacks if he can. Now Chaser after that fight, uh, picking up that item, getting some gold. He's third in net worth, 15k, he's a thousand behind TA at 16, and then 10k in front of that is going to be Barney on the Alchemist at 26k, but Chaser now doing a lot of damage, pretty close to what I can only assume to be a BKB. Yep. Um, most likely going to be the BKB, I agree with that. Uh, an interesting pickup considering he did go for the Lincolns early. But, um... We'll see if it works. It will definitely help against a lot of their heroes. Um, going to be pretty interesting. As you mentioned, forcing the buyback is really big on the Alchemist, actually. Um, I, I mean, if they catch him one more time, it's pretty hard to kill him. He is six slotted as well. So there is really a. There isn't really going anywhere from here for him. Maybe getting boots of travel, maybe rebuying BKBs over and over again uh, if they do get low. But he does have nine seconds on his still. So we'll see about that. But, I mean, if they can find another pickoff, that could be an easy rack spot him. I suppose they could sell the Shadow Blade to, to pick up a bigger item, like maybe a Maelstrom or MKB or something like that, but... It's also a pretty good item work, to have uh, for the escape and maneuverability it presents, but... Oh. Smoke up now from, uh... Lanai's little secrets here, going up to the top, just trying to find any pickoffs. Um, I wonder if they're gonna go they on the bear. They find the they bear, They do yeah. look like they're gonna go for it. That way they can push. The bear's not up for 50 seconds. I don't know if they know that, but uh, okay, wow. we do, and that's going to be big. Yep. There is still the Refresher up now still on the Warlock, so he does have the four golems. They do melt really quickly, and if they find a way of keeping them up for just a little bit, they do a lot of damage mixed in with his uh, with his Fatal Bonds there. Yeah, although last fight, like we saw, Barney took him out in two seconds combined with Fan. If the supports weren't picked off really, really fast on the side of LLS, I think that fight would have been completely different. The other big thing to note is while he took them out really quickly, he lost at least, he lost over half his health there from those golems um, before he took them out. So that's pretty important as well. Just the proc triggering on the extra damage there is really important considering that uh, the first two golems come down and while they're, uh, he's stunned from the second two golems, they do have at least uh, two or three attacks on him. Darkseer Ford also had no wall uh, in that fight as well. It was used That's at the right, racks. they used it in the mid lane. <laughs> but clearly showing CTP can still win fights, uh, obviously with uh, Ag's refresher on a Warlock, you always got the opportunity. But if you look into the graphs, I mean, you see that team fight that looks so good for CTP, it barely budged the graphs, like, at all. Do a yeah, quick I mean, item check overall. It's a bit unfortunate.
It does stop the slope though, so just now evening out. Yeah. Um, that that's good at least. That's kind of a win. That, that is or true. A it is a win if you're behind. Uh, but we got a Daedalus <laughs> on fan, so gonna be hitting hard there. Is the Ags finished yep. on CD for the Visage? No, it's not. Uh, Ghost Scepter up on Ares. That'll definitely buy him some time there. Uh, Ghost Scepter as well on the Shadow played, Demon. Uh, and Desso working in towards an MKB is Chaser on that Weaver. And I think Aminzi is going for a Basher as I see him with the Javelin right now in his inventory. So is this like a casual Mithril Hammer on the Weaver? I'm not too sure what to think about this. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Is that a is that a mistake? How close is Javelin to... Uh, it's not that close. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Well, Chaser could be in trouble, but Chaser the ice actually... path... Ah, the Lincoln's gonna be good enough to get him out of there. Sorry, yep. I just know good thing. Maybe he was going BKB, then they, they took that fight and it went so well, and he's like, ah, oh, screw it, I'll just go MKB, because like, I don't really need it. I don't know. It could be what... Maybe he changed his mind? It's 24 damage, but it's an inefficient way to get 24 damage, I feel like. Yeah. And it also just takes up a slot. Yeah, not really that efficient. But, I mean, we'll see what he decides to do with it. Maybe he's kind of caught between going the MKB and going the BKB. Well, he's got the, the MKB, MKB in dilemma. about 400, 480 gold. He'll have that MKB finished up, and that'll be nice. He'll be hitting pretty hard. And with the AC up on the Spirit Bear, uh, that's minus five armor overall, but I guess the playing field's kind of equal now. Uh, both ACs out for both sides. As Alk picks up a Daedalus, does sell the Shadow Blade, so no more Shadow Blade. Uh, still has the Wisp Tether and Overcharge and Teleport to sort of initiate and get to the fight. Uh, the more passive they are, the better for almost for both teams until they find a pickoff. So. It, it, this is like one of the hardest times in the game. Um, the For LLS, I mean, they took a lot of damage, a surprising amount of damage in the last fight at the Roche Pit. Uh, and then for uh, CTP, I mean, they know they're behind. They don't know how much they are behind. Uh, and it's not that bad. It's manageable just based on the heroes that they have. And the fact that uh, if they find one pickoff, it can lead to another and another and another because of the Weaver's chase ability there. Um, but... You know, it's it's risky for the, either team not to be five. And there's that MKB finished up, so kind of all in right now, not saving for buyback. Uh, I didn't realize he has a cheese. Uh, did someone just give him to that? No, it looks yeah. like he picked it up. Yeah, so he's got a cheese on him right now, which is basically two time lapses. So he can potentially do a lot of damage, maybe win this next fight. The Aegis was on fan, I believe, right? Yeah, and it dropped, so he's got the cheese from that Roche attempt. Uh, it was on the bear earlier. Um... I'm not too sure when that happened, but I mean, they have it. <laughs> That's good. Good enough. Oh, Bear can use it too, huh? Because it doesn't cost any mana. Oh, correct. I... I would assume. I don't know. That's the thing about Dota. Like, there's so many things. You, you're <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I've played this game for 2,000 hours. Yeah. It took but, people uh, a year to minutes. figure out the armlet on a Spirit Bear thing. That's a really nice pickup by Fan now. Uh, the Diffusal Blade pickup is definitely going to help them with the insta-killing of the Golems. The thing is, they don't have a problem dealing with the Golems, they have a problem with the Golems landing. Um, in that sense, potentially having an Orchid would have been even better. Just being able to silence the Warlock, deal with him before it even starts, and if that's the case, I mean, that's that's the best case, really. Yeah, I could have, I mean, I'm all for a Sheepstick on heroes like TA, because she's got a lot of burst damage without items, and same thing with, I mean, you don't see Ursa in competitive a lot, but you get a Sheepstick on Ursa, he does a ton of damage with Fury Swipes anyway, like, it's a pretty good pickup, especially when they're farming, but, uh, or in this case, for a faster attack speed, you can pick up that Orchid, and the Orchid should be enough to burst down that Warlock, he's float in a little under 2k health, but with the damage outputs at 50 minutes into this game almost, it uh, wouldn't really matter. So, um, the only other thing I can think of, like, if I'm trying to be really picky, is the BKB, uh, maybe consider going Daedalus earlier. Um, not positive, though. I mean, you can always BKB on out the Tangle. Uh, on the Templar Assassin. Oh, the TA? Okay. Even on the Alk, yeah, the BKB was pretty early for him there, too. It was before his AC. When's the Roche timer? He's, oh, he's about to spawn over here, and maybe, we haven't seen the 30 second warning yet, so maybe, like, 40 seconds out. Uh, looks like they're smoked yeah. up and preparing for it right now. 
Uh, there's a ward up here on the high cliff. That's from the Dire, so that's Gary TP's ward. They just saw TA, and they see the Darkseer now, so they know that they can take this Roche as soon as it spawns. And this will be the fourth Roche. That'll be two cheeses up on the, uh, on the Weaver if they decide to take it. There's the warning, so 30 second respawn. But is it worth trading a potentially a top and a mid racks for a Roche attempt? Probably not, and that's why it looks like they're running back now. Yeah. Shadow Demon has a TP, but still just standing in Roche. Yep, it was a nice trap that was potentially laid out by LLS there, just making sure if that uh, Roshan was attempted by the Dire there, they would have been able to get two free Raxes out of it. But a uh, really nice back off, even though Roshan has spawned, by everyone except for the Shadow Demon, actually. Um, he just wants to bro and, it up with Rosh. You know, he wants that Orb of Venom. I guess so, yeah. But everyone knows. Um, Tower is being top tower taking a little bit of damage, but that's... I feel like it's almost really worth easily. it for LLS to just go top, wait for them to try Roche, and then get a lane of racks. Like, that's way more important right now than an extra life on... Like, who are yes, they going to give an extra life to? Agree. Just a Weaver? Like, who cares? Just run away. Yep. Yep, definitely. Um, it's funny that there's going to be another cheese, so we might see two cheeses on the field right now. Um, the first one, of course, being on the Weaver right now. But, yeah, I do think the keeping up the pressure top is really easy, especially considering the fact that you have a Wisp on the field. You could even do the Roshan with just the Alchemist and the Wisp there while you keep the pressure top. Uh, it's very hard for them to deal with one or the other. I didn't realize they dropped a 2-3 tower in the bot lane on the side of uh, Lanai's Little Secrets. The 2-3 is down and the wave yep. is pushing in uh, with like 15 range creep, so... <laughs> they that might happened have when to Weaver killed the Jakiro bottom. Yeah. Ah, right. Here we go. Oh, Looking there's the two Russian. here on the side of LLS. Uh, maybe Fan trying to redeem that Dendi steal. For the fans right now, Fan. Steal that Aegis, not going to be able to. It goes down. The cheese goes down as well. But they get the racks. Oh, they don't yet, but the Fortify goes out. The two of them is down. Uh, the alt goes off. Barry's really nice. BK beat up takes no damage. He's got. He's really healthy. He turns on the golems. The golems melt. <laughs> Barney loses about half health there, but the racks going down now. Fan hops on Ares. Goodbye, Ares. Two 900 damage crits in a row. The gem is down. I don't know who dropped that. Was that Io? Did Io die there? I don't know. Uh, maybe that was Ares. It was uh, but on Chaser the... in trouble. Chaser's down. Unless he can backtrack out of that. Oh, he's got the Aegis anyways. Alp does go down, so Barney drops. He buys back. Minzy's there as well. Now chasing Aaliyah on the Darkseer, who did drop a wall. Uh, didn't seem the biggest impact wall. At least I didn't notice it as much. Surging away there from the Spirit Bear. Uh, Chaser giving some chase. The creep, though, doing work. The range Brax is down. The melee goes down now. So actually... They don't even get a Rax, uh, and the Creep are like the MVPs of this game right now, just getting that bot lane of Rax. Wow, that's The funny actually... part is Darkseer could have used his illusions from the top to easily take the Rax there, and even maybe go in for the mid Rax. Uh, they do 140% damage, he isn't controlling them at all, and that would have been two free Raxes in my opinion. Uh, just now being pinged by Purple and Orange. <laughs> like, Aaliyah, go! And... Get the Rax, yeah, kill that Shadow was actually, Demon! Uh, I'd like to say that was a pretty big mistake. They could have had two Raxes, for sure. Uh-oh. Oh, Minzy, though, in a bit of trouble. Barney from behind. BKB's popped up. Minzy goes down. There's the gem on the deck. Ares now in trouble as well. Going to be taken down. Maybe not. Pops the Ghost Scepter to live a little bit longer. Chaser with the backtrack. Ares drops. That's a cool death animation on Warlock, I've got to say. Uh, immediate buyback from Minzy. Does he have a Spear Bear? Uh, 79 seconds? So no bear? Or where's his bear? Seems strange to buy back without a bear, because he has Tranquils. Oh no, they're gonna get a Rax from the top with the Wisp PP up in the top. Nice disruption, yeah, looks just like they really are. Disruption delaying goes his out. death. Got the range, get the melee. They could probably stay. I don't know if Hy well, Hydra's yeah. gonna take them out it's anyways. Risky. Yep. Hydra lists, on the man best, man's best that. friend. <laughs> Double cheese Weaver, do it work. Yeah, wow, Weaver's uh, lasting pretty hard now, a little bit over 300, has two cheeses. But, I don't know, the cheese only does so much. If you get Ice Path and then Abyssal, like, you're dead regardless. You can't really do anything. And they're pushing yep. in here. And look how fast that Rax goes down. And it's wow. dead. Check out the last hits, 450 almost. They're going for Throne, they're going for Tier 4s, 2R down. The ult's not up, or actually the yep. ult's up as soon as Ares respawns on that Warlock. So they're going for the, the Tier 4s, they're going to go down here, Chaser's just going to town, he gets caught in Ice Path, Barney doesn't care. Gonna Abyssal Blade up Minzy, doesn't have a bear anyway, he's gonna die. Nice wall from Aaliyah, uh, maybe. This is actually a good fight. This is a really good fight for carry TP if they can win this fight because there is no buyback on the rocks the go off and the alchemist, the one taking those golems out, is dead. 
So let's see. Uh, Hydra in a bit of trouble. Fan now going to town on Ares. The Ghost Hunter gonna buy him some time. Hydra somehow still alive. Gonna go down to the uh, Shadow Word Pain or whatever it's called. And the four golems chase as well as Chaser chasing away. Fan blinks into the base, into the tier four. The illusions this time being controlled Elia's by Elia's doing Dark it right. Seer. Yep. So this time exactly. he doesn't have five so of really them. Good. You heard it here. <laughs> that's true. But it did do half health to the ancient, which is really big here as well. Um, spamming pings now, defensive pings coming from the Templar Assassin. But I think he just and uh, not worry too much about it as Alchemist is only down for another 50 seconds. He'll be back up soon, along with the rest of his team that is down. So I don't think this is enough. Um, I don't, yeah, it's not a big enough window of opportunity to win this game here. Let's check out the gold graph still just going out crazy in favor. Uh, in terms of gold, they're 30k ahead right now. XP has been flowed down to 15 ever since that Roshan fight. I guess really not a whole lot of room for it to go once one team caps out on XP. But Chaser now pushing down the mid lane. Uh, TA's got travels and bought a Mantis style straight up because she had 6,000 gold, still has 2.5k. Uh, where's this Alchemist at? He's dead. He's buying up a heart right now as he's sitting at 5k. And uh, Chaser goes down. That's a satanic. Does he have buyback? He does. And he's got one cheese left after that. Oh, he bought Satanic, okay. Probably smarter, actually. Wisp TPing in. Is it just going to be a Wisp? Yes, it is, but it doesn't really matter. Tether stun as well. And now two down. One of them... Well, he's got the buyback. Let's see. Visage? No. No buyback on Visage, but not sure how much he matters right now. Besides the familiars, which are still alive, I think. No, can't find him. Yep. And this is kind of the victory lap, I guess. Uh, the victory stroll if you will, from the uh, Lanai's Little Secrets team here, just running up the mid lane as all five. The Satanic, uh, instead of the Battle Fury now on the Alchemist, and he is sitting on a six second BKB, which he could change, but he's going to want the buyback this time around. Uh, unfortunately, it's down for another minute, 20 seconds, but they're looking to throw Don't know Fortify how much it's going to matter. From, the uh, Fortify's there, but there's 30 seconds on the Golems. Or 30 sec yeah, 30 seconds on the Golems. There were... The glyph is used, but I think if they just focus the throne here. Chaser going to town Barney's on Barney. Barney actually about to die. Maybe not. Turns around and Wall's thrown out. Doesn't really replicate anyone yet, but it doesn't matter. Throne's being focused and a 55-minute GG. Congratulations to Lanai's Little Secrets moving on to the round of 8 on the 25th. Um, in case you were watching this and wondering what this was, this is the Man Up 2.0 tournament hosted by Southpaw Gaming. Big shout out to Darkside for putting this all together. I'm Helium, and with me tonight was Orbit. You can check us out at FMBP Dota. And thanks for watching, everyone. There's your score screen, and then we'll take you back to the brackets here, and then maybe come back with some other information or some giveaways. See you again soon.